So a few people have been asking me about the specs of all of the various pieces of equipment that we've had installed for our new South Arrays where I'm comparing a string inverter against microinverters in this experiment that I'm, I'm going to be performing over the next few years. And uh, I'm going to go through all of the data sheets with you today and then summarize what we basically paid for the whole thing at the end. So uh, yeah, who's ready for some data sheets? So I brought up the Midsummer Wholesale website here where actually you can get all of the equipment that we installed recently. Um, this isn't actually where my installer got this equipment, I don't think, but um, it's a nice convenient website for me to show you. And uh, you can see the indicative prices um, comparing uh, the specs and all that other stuff and I can download the data sheet. So that's the most important thing from my perspective. So let's start with the solar panels themselves. We got six Aco Neostar 2S460 all black panels um, you can see peak power output 460 watts um, and all the various other um, uh, bits of information there but uh, let's bring up the actual data sheet itself um, from ACO and you can see that this is a range that spans 460 to 470 watts um, I think the, the best you can get in the UK at the moment is 460 potentially um, and uh, the one we've got um, is this one here the ACO 460 uh, MAH 54 MB and you can see it's got a panel efficiency of 23.1% 460 watts um, maximum power and uh, yeah that's uh, really not much more to it than that um, you can see that the, uh, the degradation curve is quite shallow after 30 years um, it should still be outputting roughly 89% of its original um, output so that's pretty good um, compared to um, most panels are, are, are pretty good nowadays this is certainly um, in amongst the best ones so that's good to see um, the uh, the other interesting thing to note here is the temperature coefficient so this is how much the efficiency um, changes with respect to temperature so the baseline of 460 watts is usually measured at about 25 degrees yeah you can see it there 25 degrees and for every degree above or below 25 degrees, the efficiency of the panel either goes up or down. So typically what happens is when it gets cooler, the panel efficiency increases slightly. And when it gets warmer, the panel efficiency decreases slightly. And for this particular panel, that coefficient is minus 0.26% per degree C, which means it will drop by 0.26% for every degree C it, uh, the uh, temperature rises by. Um, that's actually quite good as well compared to um, a lot of panels, a, a typical... Um, temperature coefficient that you'll see nowadays is um, somewhere around about 0.3%. Um, so this is a little bit better than that, which is good to see, which means that um, for our south facing panels, which are likely to get a little bit warmer in the summer than our east west panels, this is definitely going to help um, by uh, making sure that the panel efficiency doesn't drop too quickly as the temperature increases. So let's move on to the string inverter. This is connected to three of those ACO panels, and we've gone for the Fox ESS. Uh, S-series G2 1.5 kilowatts single phase 1 MPPT string inverter. So uh, this is um, quite a small inverter. Typically uh, you would have much larger inverters than this but because we've only got three panels we tried to find a nice small inverter um, with a very low startup voltage and that will be important in a second when I start talking about the uh, microinverters. Um, so uh, let's uh, look at the um, uh, data sheet for this. Um, so you can see here we've got the um, data sheet for this particular range and this um, uh, range of string inverters actually goes as low as 700 watts would you believe uh, which is incredible really I didn't think you could get inverters with um, such a low uh, low output rating um, but that's um, that's very useful for certain situations because obviously if you only had a couple of panels then 700 watts might be perfectly fine for you and um, obviously we've got three uh, three panels so uh, 1500 watts um, sorry, 1.5 kilowatts is just right because four, three times 460 watts um, will fit nicely into that uh, that range there. I think it's um, 1.38 uh, kilowatts or something is the maximum that you could get out of three um, 460 watt panels. And you can see, uh, you know, the, the, it ranges all the way up to 3.3 kilowatts. This particular range. Um, the important thing here is the startup voltage, um, and uh, you can see for this particular range, it's only 60 volt, uh, 60 volts, which is um, surprisingly low actually um, very very low indeed um, so yeah uh, keep that figure in your mind uh, for later so uh, 60 volts um, I'll come back to that in a minute um, you can see down here let's have a look the other important information is the uh, euro efficiency so this is a weighted efficiency across a range of um, output uh, powers and you can see that for this particular inverter we've got a, a weighted efficiency of 96.8% um, so yeah, I'll just scroll down to show you the rest of the data sheet there. None of the rest of this is particularly 
relevant um, right now. Um, but uh, yeah, let's move on to the uh, microinverters next. So for the remaining three panels on our system, we've got um, N-phase microinverters connected to those. So these are the IQ8HC microinverters. Um, so these will go up to uh, 380 watts. That's also important because our panels obviously are 460 watts, which means if the sun is fully square onto those panels, we will be getting some clipping for these uh, these microinverters. So that's part of the experiment to see if that clipping is um, important over the course of the year. Um, so again, let's check out the data sheet from Enphase for these microinverters. And I'll scroll down. There's a bunch of stuff at the top here that's not super relevant. Now, here's where um, things become interesting. So one of the key selling points for microinverters is their low startup voltage. This is something that Enphase keep banging on about. And you can see here the uh, uh, startup voltage for a single microinverter is only 22 volts. Now that's uh, relevant because if I go back to the um, uh, Fox inverter, uh, the startup voltage for the Fox inverter is 60 volts. Now this is what um, Enphase uh, claim is the big selling point for microinverters is the low startup voltage. However, when you've got three uh, panels connected to a string inverter, such as the, the Fox um, ESS one here, uh, the combined voltage of those three panels um, uh, will is, is going to be effectively con all contributing to this startup voltage. So a startup voltage of 60 volts for three panels is actually not dissimilar to the startup voltage of um, 22, panel, uh, 22 volts for a single panel connected to a microinverter. So when people say that um, the low startup voltage is going to give the microinverters an advantage, I'm not sure that's strictly going to be true in this particular case because the Fox... Um, string inverter has got such a low startup voltage, more or less equivalent to the microinverter. So that's going to be very interesting to see um, whether or not that um, uh, renders this uh, particular aspect of the microinverters completely moot or not. Um, but obviously all the data will be revealed in due course, so we'll be coming back to that. Um, so yeah, the other interesting point here is the um, efficiency. Where's the? Uh, where is it now? I, I've lost it. Oh yeah, here it is. So here's the uh, the euro weighted efficiency. Just for comparison against the string inverter, we have 96.8% uh, for this particular uh, microinverter. We've got the um, uh, HC version here, which has got the higher uh, uh, output um, rated power output here of uh, 380 watts. So yeah, the um, the European weighted efficiency of 96.8%. Let's uh, quickly compare that against the um, uh, the Fox inverter of, um, well, let's take the 1.5 kilowatt one. Here we go, 96.5%. So very, very similar. So 96.5% for the Fox inverter and 96.8% uh, for the microinverter. So very slightly um, higher uh, efficiency for the microinverters, but not really a huge amount. So yeah, that'll be very interesting to see how that compares as well. But in addition to those microinverters, we also needed a IQ gateway from Enphase. This is to ensure that all of the data is collected correctly and to make sure that the warranty is valid because the warranty for the um, uh, microinverters is only valid uh, as long as the IQ gateway is also installed. So um, along with the three lots of £168, we've also had to pay £179 for the gateway as well. Um, and this um, just basically um, manages all of the connect, um, uh, communications between the three microinverters and the cloud for the data storage of the Enphase data. Um, and I'm, I'm not really going to go into much of this. I'm just going to scroll down uh, very quickly to show you the specs of this. Um, not a lot to say really about this. It's not really involved in the um, conversion of power. So uh, from my perspective, not particularly relevant. But uh, just for completeness, I'll scroll down so you can get an idea of um, what the uh, what this box actually does. Uh, honestly, I don't really know, so uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can download all these data sheets from the Midsummer Wholesale website if you're interested. And finally, we also have an Enphase Q relay. So this is a little box. Um, I showed it in um, in my installation video. It's actually in the uh, consumer unit for all of the solar now. Um, and this is not strictly necessary. It says it's not required in the UK. Um, but the idea with this is it basically just disconnects the um, the, the panels if there are certain uh, grid abnormalities. So let me show you the uh, the data sheet um, and, uh, and read exactly what it says here. Uh, now it says here it's uh, uh, during specific 
Specified grid abnormalities, the QRLA disconnects the end phase microinverters from the AC grid. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's some sort of safety feature. Um, the fact that it's not required in the UK means I suppose this, um, there's no particular regulation that requires it in the UK itself. It's definitely required in other countries. I think the US requires it. Um, it's not super expensive. It's only about 60 quid. So um, I guess my installer just decided to throw that in um, just for safety. Uh, yeah, but it's not particularly uh, necessary in this installation, but it doesn't really add much to the total cost. So while I'm here I should probably talk briefly about the warranties for the two different inverter systems. So the Enphase um, uh, microinverters have a limited warranty of 25 years. Now the um, important word here is limited so that doesn't mean that they will fully replace your microinverters if they fail after 23-24 years. Um, limited means that they will there will be some contribution uh, that reduces over time so the, the longer the, um, it's been since they've been installed uh, the lower that uh, that replacement um, value will be. But uh, yeah, they will cover the cost of replacement, including scaffolding costs up to about five years, I think, um, but uh, not beyond that. So you're, you're liable to require some contribution from yourself if there is a failure of one of these microinverters. So that's worth bearing in mind. Obviously, the more microinverters you have on your system, the more likely one of them is to fail. So that's something worth considering. Uh, for the uh, Fox system, um, the warranty is actually five years. Uh, now, obviously, it's much simpler to replace a um, string inverter. So if it does fail after five years, it should last a lot longer than five years. I'd, I'd be surprised if it doesn't last 10. Um, so um, it's possible that um, you'll probably have to replace your string inverter long before you have to replace any of your microinverters, but it's significantly easier and cheaper to do so. So those are the those are the things that worth are worth bearing in mind when you're trying to decide whether or not to get a string inverter versus microinverters. Obviously, there's all the other um, pros and cons that I will go into in another video. But uh, yeah, the warranty is an interesting one and something that certain people will uh, find relevant. Um, so I thought I'd better mention it here. So I expect you've been sat there patiently waiting for me to reveal the total cost of all of this equipment and I can tell you that um, we spent a total of £4,200 on these new South Arrays. Uh, now that includes extra cost for installing on a slate roof because um, it's uh, more costly to install on a slate roof than on uh, a tiled roof. Uh, so yeah, that's something to bear in mind if you've got a slate roof, it will cost you a bit more. Um, and it also that we also paid for the scaffolding and the cost of the roofer and the electricians. So what that doesn't include is any profit margin for the installer. So that's the bit that we got basically um, uh, for free for um, promoting the installers. And and uh, for those of you who are interested in getting a quote from those installers, they are Green Team 1. Go and check them out. Um, there's a link in the description. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.